Here we got we got a game Gary Kasparov against Anatoly Karpov and um in this game Gary Kasparov was the white pieces and Anatoly Karpov was the black pieces. Let's get started. What do you think Eric Sparrow's first move was in this position? Nah, I'm actually game. Got to keep the grind set. Yeah, play a game and actually figure out the best moves here. What do you think Eric Sparrow did first in this position? And I forgot to set up my fast evaluation whiteboard. You know what I mean? How to evaluate games. Give me your first move while I'm um, writing out this stuff. What do y'all think he played first? Wyatt Williams. I'm, I'm thinking you're correct. Let me let me double check real quick. If I look through the game, right, the first move that Gary Kasparov actually played was e4, and then Anatoly Karpov played e5, knight f3, attacking the pawn, knight c6, and then we got the move bishop e5. Do y'all know what this opening is called? Do y'all know what this opening is called? What opening is this called on the board while I'm writing out these things? Spanish? Roy Lopez. It's not the Portuguese <laughs> opening, but it is the Roy Lopez. So, in, the, in this Roy Lopez and all the people who's running right now, make sure that you hit the like button and not only hit the like button, but make sure that you figure out the best moves in this game by chatting. I'm going to be looking at the chat, making sure that you're, I'm saying the right moves. And if you say the correct move, especially if I ask you a question, I will shout out your name to the entire YouTube world. All right. So after Bishop to B5, we got the move A6, which is in the main theory, Bishop A4. And then after Bishop A4, Knight F6, and then we got the move Castle King side. How do y'all feel about the Rory Lopez? I'm going to do a poll right now. How do y'all feel about the Rory Lopez? Do y'all play this all the time or do y'all not? I'm going, to, I'm going to do a poll. Rory Lopez, do you like it or not? Like it or not? Oh, like it or hate it? Tell me what y'all think. What do you, how do y'all feel about this? Nope, I was about to write down the same type of wording again. Okay, we got pawn structure. Um, what's the last two things? Center control in development. This is how you judge a position very quickly. That's why I'm writing this down. Yeah, I like it or hate it. Hey, I'm a 700 ELO player and I lose. Do you have any advice? I mean, and I get so frustrated when my with my blunders and dumb losses. Do you have any advice for low ELO players like me? Well, if you're still blundering pieces, you know, not seeing exactly what your opponent's next move is, I would definitely look up like the thought process of chess. I have one over, I did go over it in my podcast, Chess Knowledge with H1, that is on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And keeping that thought process in mind, especially when you get into the middle game, is really important. It's in, it's always good to blunder check, too. Don't be playing fast games. I'll just play rapid for now until you just stop blundering pieces. And then one good tip that you can use is play anti-chess on leechess.org or if it's on chess.com. Anti-chess is basically you just have to keep track of all captures and whoever loses all their pieces, the, um, whoever loses all their pieces first wins the game. But anyway, well, I do. It's my main opening. Yeah, the Roy Lopez is actually a really good opening. It's actually a really good opening. So uh, make sure that you like the video if you're just not coming in here. So after the move Bishop to E7, we have by Anatoly Karpov. We have by Gary Kasparov, Rook E1, and Anatoly Karpov does the move B5, attacking the Bishop on A4. After Bishop B3, after bishop b3, d6, then we have to move c3. After c3, castle king side, and then we got this move by Gary Kasparov, h4. Wait a minute. Yeah, h3. My bad. After h3, bishop to b7, then we have the infamous move that usually Roy Lopez players play after, you know, 
I don't know, you got everything set up like H3, etc. D4, because with the Ray Lopez, you want to control the center. And it's a very slow game. It's a more maneuvering game than uh, an open and tactical game. So what do you... Okay. What is the point of H3? Okay. The point of H3 is preventing... Most grandmasters, most title players do not like this bishop going to G4, pinning the knight to the queen. Then you're going to have to like figure out how to unpin your pieces. And it just wrecks everything. And that's why most players like to do H3. And not only stops the bishop, but it gives a luft to your king to go to H2. It gives a luft to go to, uh, for your king to go to H2. Well, all right. So after D4... Rook to e8. Then we have the move by um, Karpov. Not Karpov, but Garry Kasparov. What do you think he did next year? What do you think Garry Kasparov did next year? All right. I'm looking at the chat right now. I'm giving y'all some time. So King h1. D5. Not D5. Look, and this this is still the opening right now, so we're still trying to develop pieces. Still, man, y'all are a little bit too close. We're still trying to develop pieces here. <laughs> Did he move the bishop? Uh, uh, 1708 blundered, made in two, move 10. Yeah, that's, that's horrible, but it does happen all the time. That's where we got all of our chest traps from. It's from, like, grandmasters ruining positions like that. Uh, that was awkward. What do you, what do you think? Oh, yeah, it is awkward sometimes. Did he move the bishop? No, he did not move the bishop. So if we're trying to find, figure out the best move here, we just got to remember something in our position is that we still have developed our queen side pieces here. How do you think development goes in the Roy Lopez? I'm going to ask y'all that question. What move would you say? And then plus two, if you're watching right now, make sure that you chat because actually... If you figure out the Grandmaster's best move, that's going to encourage you to do that in your own games. It's going to help you improve when you look over and understand Grandmaster's games in the past. Yeah, I played one of those traps. What about Bishop G5? I'm pretty sure Bishop G5 probably can be played, but um, Garrett Kasparov went for another, another move here, which is very common in the Roy Lopez. I used to play this opening all the time. I used to play this opening all the time. Let me end the poll very quick. D5, not D5. Bishop E3. Well, it's, even though that's playable, well, actually, it's not playable because after Bishop E3, maybe you're going to run into something like Knight takes on E4. What happens here? Mr. Morningstar, hey, hey, how you doing? And we got the move Knight B to D2. What is the purpose of knight b to d2? Well, I'm going to let Garrett Sparoff teach us right quick before I tell you. After bishop b to d2, we got to move bishop f8, and then we got Adam being pushed to the a4 square, attacking the b pawn. After a4, and it's only Karpov just, he was like, who cares about that pawn? And that's why he did the move h6. After h6, a bishop to c2, I don't know if he's going to... Uh, I haven't forgot about the question of the knight going to d2 yet. After bishop c2, e takes on d4, and then we have the move c takes on d4. After c takes on d4, knight to uh, b4, what is our next move by Garry Kasparov? What is our next move here? And I don't know if it's going to happen in this game. I kind of forgot, but usually... Let me just explain this. Usually, if you're playing the Roy Lopez, the knight goes to the knight on the B file goes to D two to usually go to F one and to and to like develop on the E three or G three squares because that knight usually wants to go to the F five square in the future. But I don't know if that's going to happen in this position since the position just opened up, the E file opened up, the bishop on B seven is targeting the the E pawn. So I don't know what Garrett Gasparov is going to be doing in this position. We got sense in here. Hey, man, how you doing? What is the next best move by Gary Kasparov? We got Bishop B3. Now, that's not the move that he did here, though. He didn't do Bishop B3. He did not do Bishop B3. 
uh, B3, B3, Bishop B3. A lot of people want to do Bishop. That's not, that's not the move that Gary Kasparov did here. Let's get some other moves, man. Come on. High energy. Let's get the moves. Let's circulate the moves. I don't care even if you put out a bad move in the chat. It does not matter. As long as you're getting your brain working. That's the only thing that I care about. What's another, what's another move here? The knight on B4 is attacking the bishop right now. And we do not want to give our opponent the bishop pair advantage. So what other move can we do here? Knight F1. Well, not knight F1 at this position. We actually, do, you are at the right spot. We actually do want to move the bishop on C2. We actually do want to move the bishop on C2. So upon E6, no. Well, there's nothing that can go to E6. There's nothing that can go to E6. Oh, wait, E5. So bishop d3 just runs into knight takes on d3. That's not the correct move. There's only two safe squares where that bishop can go. H1, another easy dub. E5, not e5 in this position. That's not what Gary Kasparov did here. What do you think a grandmaster would do? 1600s are so weird. Yeah, they are weird, somewhat. And then we got what symbol is that? We got the slash in here. <laughs> doing the move bishop b1 and that's exactly what Gary Kasparov did here so after doing the move bishop to b1 then Anatoly Karpov is coming after us doing the move c5 so what are we supposed to do about this our opponent is literally attacking us what would you do after our opponent does the move c5 what would you do I'm asking you directly in this position this is you you're the white pieces you're going against a world champion and Actually, going against a world champion contender because you're already world champion. What would you do against him? Slash, be slashing those good moves. I know, exactly. Ugh. Oh, wait a minute. Where's my sword at? <laughs> be slashing. Is that like golf? That's not even slashing. I need to get my swordsman play. What's the next move here? If your opponent does the move C5, now we're going to have to deal with this tension between d4 and c5. We're Gary Kasparov, we're the white pieces. This is still technically good for us, even though I think I would rather play black side in this position. I hate like the pieces being cramped, even if it's equal. Would you take? Okay, actually that's a good, that's a good thing to think about. I notice our bishops um, can form an attack on the king's side. Yeah, they can. I'm glad that you noticed that too, Wide Williams, because if you're looking at this position, if if this opens up or if we do e5, these bishops can easily attack the king's side. But we're not at that moment yet. We still have to uh, to figure out and solve the problems that our opponent has given us, which is this tension. Do we take the pawn on c5 or do we push? Let me make it more simple. Do we take the pawn on c5 or do we push? What do you what do you think Eric Kasparov did here? And if you're watching this right now, we're trying to figure out the best moves of Gary Kasparov, which is a grandmaster, and he was the world champion by, um, by this point. And make sure if you're in here, make sure that you like the video. All right, this is a free chess lesson for you that I'm going to be posting um, streams every single day for you to watch. I think push, take, okay. Push, I think, Mr. Uh, Mr. Morningstar. Sounds pretty interesting. What else do we got here? Push, take. What else do we got here? Okay, that's all the suggestions. Well, Gary Kasparov, at this moment, you then have uh, knight b3 push. Okay, big brain is in here. So now we got this position, d5, and that's exactly what Gary Kasparov did here. After the move d5, then... And Anatoly Karpov did the move knight to d2, uh, knight to d7 to maybe go to knight to e5 in the future, which in this position, Gary Kasparov did a really weird rook lift. Which move do you think he did here? He did a really weird move that I don't think that most people would do at this present moment. He did a really weird rook lift. And all the people who's joining, we're going over this game, Gary Kasparov against Anatoly Karpov, and we're trying to figure out the best moves to defeat Anatoly Karpov. And these are Grandmaster games that's going to help you in, in the future. Find the best moves in these chess games. That's the title. Remember that. All right. So what we got here? I'm looking at the moves. I'm looking at the suggestions. I'm trying to get out the way of the board, too. 
We got Rook to A3. Skylar Dillian Bennett. That is the correct move. Rook to A3. After Rook to A3, we got the move C4. And then after C4, what do you think was played next here? After C4, he kind of, our opponent kind of opened up a square for us to land a piece on. Every time your opponent does a pawn move, you should always like think about, okay, what squares are they giving us? What squares are they not giving us? What squares are being attacked? Things of that nature. You should always be constantly answering questions when you're playing a chess game, especially if it's a long classical chess game or even a rapid. Just answer the questions very quickly so that you can understand the position fully on your own. Wide Williams, you are correct. We got the move knight to d4. Because that's what happens after you do like a pawn push. Because we already know playing chess that pawns cannot go backwards. After knight d4, queen to f6 by your opponent. Then we got to move knight d to f3. After knight d to f3, knight to c5. So we get the d4 square, but our opponent gets a c5 square. It's like a, a big trade off. After knight c5, a takes on b5. And then our opponent decides to do this move. A takes on B5. What happens next? What do you think Garrett Kasparov did next after they took our pawn back? This is all you. I want to give you this. This um, this is all you. I want to give you this advantage that you can. I mean, you're learning something for free, right? So I want you to try your hardest to figure out the best moves in this Grandmaster game. What move do we do next? I'm looking at the chat right now. What moves do we do next here? We got 13 people watching. Knight to B5. Skylar, you are correct. Knight takes on B5. And I'm up here like swinging this stick around like I'm doing something with it. After Knight takes on B5, then what moves do we got here? Knight takes on B5. Rook takes on A3. And then what's the next move here? What's the next move after Rook takes on A3? What are we doing? Before the pawn trade, couldn't we just put the bishop on c2 and trap the knight? Before the pawn trade. What pawn trade? Put the bishop on c2. Wait a minute. I don't know exactly what you're talking about. Let me look on this right quick. Before the pawn trade. Which pawn trade? I don't, I don't understand that question. Just put the bishop on c2 and trap the, um, that I don't, the, if the bishop went to c2, it's not really trapping anything. I don't know what you're trying to trap. That knight on b4 is perfectly fine there. Pawn takes on the, yeah. okay, so do y'all want to take with the pawn or do you want to take with the knight? Do y'all want to take with the pawn or do you want to take with the knight? Those are the two options here. Pawn takes or knight. Okay, we got two people that are saying pawn. Oh, man, I don't know whether I'll take the, the knight or the pawn. Pawn, side dragon, 38. Hey, man. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> side side dragon, take with pawn, 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 pawn. A knight, uh, knight d4. That's random. <laughs> our opponent just took our rook, man. <laughs> I think knight, then you can take with the pawn. All right. So, in this position, actually, Gary Kasparov took with the knight. He took with the knight. And he took with the knight because that just, I know taking with the pawn, it would have been attacking a knight, but he wanted to take with the knight to apparently attack the pawn on c4. Because now that c4 is definitely a weakness. After, after dang it, the computer went all the way forward. After knight takes on a3, then we got the move by our opponent, bishop to a6. And then we got a, another weird rook lift. We got another weird rook lift in this position. Take the castle. What other weird rook lift do you think that Gary, Gary Kasparov did? E3? Yeah. 
He did rook to e3 in this position, and we're going to figure out why he did that in this position. And I want y'all to, and this is a game by Gary Kasparov against Anatoly Karpov, and I want y'all to figure out the best moves as I'm going through the game. After rook to e3, rook to b8, then we got what move? And this next move is pretty explosive. Because I'm thinking that Gary Kasparov wanted to put the pressure on his opponent with this next move. What do you think Eric Kasparov did here? C7 with Breton um, taking their rook as an in-between move on the light or pawn. E f slash, man, you are doing really good. Uh, and then people were saying, okay, if knight takes on C4, bishop takes on C4. Okay, so we got to leave those pieces there. But the good thing is, is that their bishop is stuck on a pawn that's only worth one point, even though our knight is stuck on a pawn that's worth 1.2. But it's, it's okay. Our knight is doing better than their bishop but we got the move e5 threatening the pawn and threatening the queen and opening up the position for our pieces and that's what we need it's important in order it's important to have activity when we're playing chess if we don't have activity then we do not have anything we don't have tactics we don't have strategy if we don't have good pieces that are placed at quality squares so after the move e5 we got the move D takes on E5. D takes on E5. Knight takes on D5, uh, E5. And then we have the move Knight B to D3. What happens next after Knight B to D3? Actually, we're going to just continue because he did a small mistake here. Even though in this position, Queen C2 was like the best engine move, which isn't practical at all. Garrett Kasparov did the move Knight to G4, attacking the Queen. After knight to g4, queen went to b6, and then after queen b6, what move do you think Gary Kasparov did here? And he always wanted to attack the king for some reason. He always wanted to attack the king somehow, some way, and how do you think he would prepare for that? How do you think he would prepare for that? Pawn e5 to start the pawn break? Yeah. That was a good pawn break to like alleviate some of the closeness or crampness of our pieces. We still have the bishop advantage. And if we open up the position a lot more or if black does a mistake, then we're definitely going to be winning and our opponent's position is going to be busted. Knight to h6. Not knight to h6 yet. Not knight to What's the next move that Gary Kasparov did in this position right here? And this is a game by Gary Kasparov against Anatoly Karpov. Make sure that you like the video if you're coming in here. This is free chess knowledge, chess wisdom, chess understanding. We're always running it back with another episode on this channel. I have over 800 videos that you can watch a beginner's playlist, an intermediate playlist, a checkmate playlist, a tactics playlist. And I literally go over all the tactics that you need when you're playing chess. Those are all patterns that you need to become a better chess player. Knight to f6, h6 to open up. The, yeah, it wouldn't open up the king though. If you took the, if you did knight f6, the queen would just. The queen is keeping watch on the sixth rank. That's the only problem. E5 and then plus two. There's another problem. You don't have enough pieces built up to make an attack yet. So you have to prepare. You know, just like off a of Lion King, be prepared. You know what I mean. How can we be prepared <laughs> to make an attack? How can we just move all the pieces to the king side just slowly? Let me give you a hint. Let me give you a hint. How can we just, we, we did a rook lift for a reason. And that's my hint. We did a rook lift for a reason. There's, there's no sacrifices in this position yet. But we still have to play like a grandmaster. We're trying to defend our title. Put yourself in Gary Kasparov's uh, head right now, in his mindset. He doesn't want to lose to Karpov and Anatoly Karpov. He's, he's a nobody. I mean, he wasn't a nobody back then, but he's a nobody. He, he's beneath Gary Kasparov. He's not going to lose to him. Especially, I don't know which round this is, but they've been playing for too long for him to lose in this position. Davey, hey, you're new. 
You're new, man. Congr- congrats on that move. Wide wounds, you're good too. Queen F3 was a good try too, but Rook G3 first before Queen F3. Rook G3 first. What is the purpose of Rook G3? Well, now it's kind of getting scary. This rook is on the same file as the king, and now black is going to have to worry about this move all the time. If they're not worrying about that move, then they're definitely going to get checkmated very carelessly. I mean, both of these bishops is on this diagonal. This queen can quickly go to h5 if knight sacrifice on h6. There's patterns forming very slowly that um, Karpov is going to have to keep track of. And you got to have a big imagination when you're playing chess. After rook h, after rook g3, we got to move g6 for that reason. What do we play next after g6? What do we play next? Come on, P-Money. I want to see some more moves. <laughs> um, back with another dub. Uh, only 19 move ELO to go. Um, Davey, you are correct. Uh, Mr. Morningstar, you are correct. After G6, we've got the move Bishop takes on H6. Bishop takes on H6. After Bishop takes on H6, um, actually, uh, Karpov didn't even take the take the Bishop back in this position, but he did the move. Queen takes on B2. He did the move queen takes on b2. And now in this position, Gary Kasparov is still trying to form an attack on the king side, in which y'all already set this move previously, um, but this is the move that he played next. Can y'all say it again in the chat? What move did he play next? And for everybody that is watching, if you just missed like the first half of this game, I will be publishing these full streams on my YouTube channel. They'll all be here. They're going to stay here forever. Unless something weird happens. Knight to f6. No, no, we gotta form the, we can't just do random knight moves because after knight to f6, queen takes on f6 would be horrible. This queen is taking care of this whole diagonal, this whole h8 to a1 diagonal. We gotta watch out for our opponent's forcing moves first before we think of about ours. Gotta watch out for our opponent's forcing moves first before we think about ours. What are we doing next here? Wide Williams, you are correct. Gary Gasparov did the move queen to f3. And now, don't y'all think it's getting a little bit scary? What do y'all think about this position? Which which side would you rather play here? Which side are you on? Which side would you rather play? Okay, I'm putting this poll out. Which side would you rather play here? Would you rather play the white side or the black side? And what if I told you after queen f3, this game is completely equal. Like nobody doesn't even have a smidget of an advantage in this in this position right here. And if I told you that, if you said that I was lying, I wouldn't even be mad. I wouldn't even be mad, but that's how chess engines view the game. But humans are playing this, and if I'm seeing this accurately, if I'm commentating on this back then, I'm not going to think that this is just going to be a random draw. I'm thinking that there has to be a decisive result. And this is a, another thing that, that I'm thinking about, is that there's four pieces on the king side right now, so if um, Garrett Kasparov start getting combinations in this position, <laughs> Karpov is going to be in some deep trouble. So after the move queen f3, we got knight to d7. Knight to d7, still equal, and then we got the move bishop takes on f8. After bishop takes on f8, king takes on f8, and then we have the move king to h2, avoiding all checks like that queen c1 check. After king h2, rook to b3. Black is trying to keep the activity going. After rook to b3, what do you think um, Gary Kasparov played next here? What do you think he played next? Matello, hey, how you doing? Hello, fellow gamers. I would pick white because white attacks 
uh, while kind of keeping a cocoon defense. Yeah. So the king is definitely safer with white. That's all I can say about that. Valid. What happens if queen c1 uh, check king h2 bishop d6? Well, that bishop on h6 was defending that c1 square, if you remember beforehand. Whatever, dude. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Go to sleep then, man. Dang, it's only 930. You played in the whole tournament. <laughs> it's okay, man. Good night. Hello, Matello. Black Sludge. White, definitely. Okay, okay. I'm getting your opinions. What do you think white play next year? What is the next move? All you people who's favoring white, what is the next best move that you would play? If you was Gary Kasparov, you're a world champion, you know, just, just, you know, puff up your chest. Be prideful about what you have. You can only trust in yourself. No question mark moves. You can only believe in yourself. There's nobody else that's going to do moves for you. I'm not going to be, if you're playing in a tournament, I'm not going to be at the desk beside you being like, okay, got a winning position. All right. All you have to do is just think about that. No, I'm not going to be that person. I'm not going to be there when you're playing chess alone online. So what is the best move in this position? Rook C2, it's 10.50 here in Florida. Dang, man. I need to start streaming a little bit earlier. <laughs> Does this have something to do with the danger levels? There, Well, there's no danger levels in this position. And all the people who's here right now, make sure that you're liking the video and make sure that you're chatting, trying to figure out the best move for white. Nobody have set the move yet. Nobody have set the best move in this position. I'm still trying to figure it out. People saying Bishop C2, Rook C2. Um, those, those are not it. Knight h6 to create checkmate threats. Well, knight h6 isn't really doing anything in this position right now. And then plus two, you're going to have to worry about all of black's threats, which they can do like moves like knight e1. You don't, you don't know what they're going to do next. What is the best moves here? Knight h6, knight to c4, knight takes on c4. Well, after, let me get my stick. After knight takes on c4, bishop takes on c4, and I don't see a really good follow-up. And after knight takes on c4, queen can even take on b1 and just forget about the knight. What's the next best move here? d6. What's, what's going on with d6? Oh, just doing pawn d6? No, 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 no. Like, rook is attacking this, this knight right here. Rook is indirectly attacking our queen on f3. We got to do concrete moves, forcing moves. What is the move here? We got to do forcing moves. What if d6? Well, I'm going to give you all one more minute. All right. I got a little timer. I bought this on Amazon. Got a little timer here. This cost at $9, just to tell you. <laughs> but you got one minute. It's a one minute sand timer. And then I'm going to tell you the next move. But I'm going to be shouting you out if you say the best move here. Matello, I know you're watching me. This dude's in the private discord that I have that's in the description down below. And he's messaging me. <laughs> knight to f6. Knight c2 is a hard, only safe move there. Okay. Well, okay. I'm, I'm just going to let y'all. I'm going to let y'all figure it out. Come on, give me some more moves. Give me some more suggestions. Do we got to move on? Queen, queen A8 check? The queen can't go to A8. Oh, so I'm guessing you're saying after the move D6, you have queen A8 check. Well, this is a very sharp position. So that's why Garrick is far off in this position. Decided to do the move. Bishop takes on D3. After Bishop takes on D3, C takes on D3. Then we got the move by Gary Kasparov. Queen to F4. Which Queen to F4 is pretty threatening, right? Because if you think about Queen to F4, you got this check on D6. You got this check on H6. I mean, you're forming some things. There's a lot of geometry going on here. And let me just say this. Karpov until this point, and that's why he did the destructive move Queen takes on a3, and after queen takes on a3, his position is busted. But it's up to you to convert this into a win. If you don't figure out the best move right now, you could be losing. You could be losing very easily. 
what, what would you do? How can we thread in the how can we thread in their king in position? Let's go. I'm not going to give you these next moves because all these moves are, are just major threats on their king. I want you all to figure out the next few moves. And these are all tactics, baby. All tactics. Come on. Y'all got this. Stay with me. Queen H6 check. Okay, that's one suggestion. We got knight to E3. We just got random H6 move. We don't got a pawn that can go to H6. A lot of people want to do queen to H6 check. A lot of people want to do queen to H6 check. What if I told you that wasn't the best move? What if I told you that wasn't the best move? I don't know. I don't know. After queen h6, there's no there's no exact good moves after queen h6. Knight e5. Come on, let's threaten something. What if I told you that this next move actually threatens mate in one? That's another hint. And just to show everybody, after queen h6, king e8 is just getting out of all the threats. Because even after queen h8, we got queen going back to f8, knight going back to f8. <laughs> That's not that's getting out of all the threats for the black pieces here. Come on, y'all got this. Knight knight to e5. After knight e5, knight takes on e5. And we if we're attacking our opponent's king, we do not want to trade pieces at all. We do not want to trade pieces. And all the people that is here right now, make sure that you like the stream because this is free chess content. I go over chess knowledge, chess was chess understanding every single day on this YouTube channel. Help me out. Chat. Give me your best move. Wyatt Williams. You are correct and valid. You are correct. Yep, both of you are correct. We got the move knight to h6. Threatening queen takes on f7. Check me. And that's why Karpov had to do the move queen to e7. Protecting the, the protecting the f7 pawn. And now, what is our next best move if we're Gary Kasparov? We're the world champion. We're trying to demolish our opponent at this moment. We've been passive all this time to get into this exact position. We've been passive this whole time to get into this exact position. Our opponent finally gave us the opportunity to harp on. I'm trying to end this poll. All right. Okay, rook to e3, not rook to e3. Valid, you are correct. Wyatt Williams, you're correct. We got the move rook takes on g6. Rook takes on g6. Why is this valid? Because the queen is taking control of the f file. The pawn cannot take the rook because the queen would be attacking the king. And you know in chess, we cannot put our king into check or that will be an illegal move. So this is called a pin. The queen is pinning the pawn to the king. That's why the next move that was played by Karpov was queen to e5. After queen e5, what are we doing next here? What are we doing next after queen to e5? If we're Garrett Kasparov, what are we doing next? I'm 1500 ELO, funny enough. Hey, no, you're finding the perfect moves. Keep on going. Keep on going. We got everybody in here. We got Mark. We got Edward. We got Slash. We got the, the Slash in here. Hey. <laughs> Skyler up in here. Pawn g3. We got queen f queen f7. What the? What the? Oh, a lot of you. OK, I'm I'm seeing what y'all thinking. So a lot of you is thinking that queen takes on F7 is checkmate. Right. But there's something wrong with this. I'm just going to have to point this out since everybody just started spamming this. Hey, Corbin. Hey, you was here yesterday. What's good? OK, why can't queen F7 happen? Wait, the queen is pinned. Yes. Hello, fellow gamers. You are correct. The queen was pinned to the king on H2. So that's why the queen. Um, could not move in this position. So you're going to have to think about another move. We can't do that. That's an illegal move. Everybody that was spamming queen takes one on F7. Let's rethink. Let's reevaluate. Let's reorganize. All right. Our opponent just found a good defensive move. How, what is our next move to do here? <laughs> I'm going to be uh, I need to find some red sticky notes because all y'all that just spammed rook takes. I mean, queen takes on F7. Shame on you. <laughs> That's all you're getting for today. 
Okay, we got the move by Dash or Slash. I think it's Slash. And then Black Sludge. We got the move Rook 2G, checking the King. And after King E7, what, what is the next move here? What is the next move after King E7? Rook G8, King E7, Knight F5. Um, the next move isn't Knight F5. Knight F5 wasn't played here. And after, and let me just say this, after knight f5, king f6, and then black is completely winning, weirdly enough. Black is completely winning. Because there's no other checks, there's no other threats. What is the best move here? <laughs> Matello, I noticed you. <laughs> A spooky zucchini. Pawn check. Yes, there we go. Pawn check. D6. After the move d6, we got the move, wait a minute, after the move d6, king e6, what happens next? What happens next after king e6? Wait, is it the pawn on d7? Yeah, the d6 pawn just checked the king, and now the king just moved to e6. Garrett Kasparov seen this beforehand, and that's why he went into this variation. Valid, you are correct. We got the move, and, and Cole Ah, is that Cole Ah? Is that really a reason? <laughs> we got the move rook to e8, and <laughs> checking the king. After rook to e8, we got the moves, we got the moves here, king to d5. After king to d5, what do you think Garrett Kasparov played next here? What do you think Gary Kasparov played next year? Because this is absolutely busted. It's losing for the black pieces. This game isn't over yet. And I'm just, I'm just I'm figuring out the moves on the computer. So don't worry about me. Not like the chess engine moves, but I'm just making sure that I'm going through each thing, each move. And I'm just giving y'all the most value as possible. Edward, yo, we 26, let's go. Yeah, 26 viewership. Man, hopefully by the end of maybe February, we can get this to like 100 viewership. I don't know. I don't know how long it takes to get popular on YouTube. But anyway, what is the next move here? I told, what? Don't, dude, I'm skipping that. <laughs> rook takes on E5, thank you. After Rook takes on E5, Knight takes on E5. What do you think Eric Kasparov's next move was? Taking with the queen isn't good. Yeah, take, we don't trade with the queen. Rook takes on e5 because the rook is less powerful than the queen. And then our, our next move, our follow-up move, is just devastating for Karpov. It's just devastating. What is our next move here? If you use Gary Kasparov, what are you doing here? Knight takes on f7? No, we're not doing knight takes on f7. We're not doing knight takes on f7 here. Even though that is still winning. Gary Kasparov thought of a better move, which I like I, I like a lot better. Wyatt Williams, hey, that is a good move. Um, knight takes on f7. You, you're thinking queen f5? Um, I don't know about queen f5. We, we still got to be careful. This d pawn can just promote very easily. Yes, Mark, Edward, um, Cole, you are all correct. D7. D7, if knight captures, which didn't happen in the game, but if knight captures on d7, what is the best move for white? If knight captures on d7, what is the best move? Do y'all see it? I'm looking. I'm looking to see if somebody can see the move. Knight takes no, not knight takes on f7. There's actually a way better move. Queen a4 attacking the rook and bishop. Queen a4. Well, there's actually that is attacking all three pieces, which maybe is. I'm thinking maybe that is still winning. Yeah, Wyatt Williams. I was looking at the move. Queen takes on f7. Um, and then Scotchpreneur. Scotchpreneur. Queen takes on f7 is. <laughs> The queen didn't want to take on f7. I just did a mouse slip on a manual board. Think about that. 
Queen takes on f7, threatening the king. The king has to move, and then you just get a free rook, skewering the king and the rook. That's why the knight did not take on d7 right away, and the move rook b8 happened. Because if this pawn promotes, then this pawn cannot do anything in this position. And then this is the last move until the end of the game. What move made Karpov, Anatoly Karpov, resign in this position? What move do you think that is? Oh, yeah, you can just ask the, ask the pawn. <laughs> Queen f5, take the pawn, fork. That wasn't a fork. That was a skewer, Terrence. Take, what, do, what are we taking? Um, side dragon, side dragon 38. That was the last move. Congrats. You figured it out, man. I mean, I need to get some like fake money. Hey, one or put a one in the chat if you if you want me to get like a like a, a money gun. That would be dope. Knight takes on f7, and this move made Anatoly Karpov resign. Because think about this: this knight cannot take on f7, or queen will take on b8. And then this on no, f7. If this knight cannot take, then promoting the pawn is definitely going to be the next option and this pawn can't even go to d2 because queen takes on d2 and that's why this is a horrible position and you will just have to resign especially if you're going against the best player in the whole world so what do y'all think about this make sure that you like the video subscribe if you haven't did so i'm going to be streaming daily on youtube and we're going to actually we're not we're not ending yet we got another game to go through and